Good morning, friends. I am here again today to discuss with you another topic of interest. Today, I will be talking about cyclic resonance accelerator. In the last lecture, we discussed about linear resonance linear accelerator, and the problem was there that it is not possible to have very long accelerator tube. To maintain high vacuum in this, and remember, the energy limitation was there. Also, that when radiation energy loss is equal to the energy gain, we cannot accelerate particle after that. And also, when the particle become relativistic, the relativistic mass varies, then resonance condition will not be obeyed. So, the limitations of linear accelerators are that. We cannot get very high energy. Earlier, first linear accelerator produced five MeV proton. The next was ten MeV proton, like that. Because when the energy gain and the radiation loss becomes equal, we cannot increase the energy beyond that. And moreover, mass starts varying at the lower velocities for the proton, etc. For heavy particles. Uh, it requires high velocity, high energy, but for the proton, it varies very early. So we cannot accelerate the ions, protons, neutrons, or alpha particle using linear accelerator to very high energy. And also, the requirement was very long accelerating tube. So the people solved the problem. By reducing the length of the tube, what they propose? They propose that let us use same RF accelerator of few kilowatts, maybe 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts power supply of radio frequency accelerator be used, and we apply that potential repeatedly. Means in place of creating so many electrostatic lines. And the gap after each always in the two in the linear accelerator, we should have only one gap, and by, by somehow we apply same potential to accelerate the particle and allow the particle to enter the same gap again and again and again and again. So this was the principle that in place of having length, we allow the particle to move in a circle. It means we apply the electrostatic potential of few hundred volt, kilo volt, to provide the acceleration, to provide the energy, and apply a magnetic field, a constant magnetic field between two plate, the vertical lines of forces, and constant, so that that field rotates the ion in a circular path. You know that a moving ion. In the magnetic field, moves in the circular path. The magnetic force is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the particle, and the electrostatic field, the acceleration. So that is the third you have. If the particle moving in this force in the other direction, so particle moves vertical force is horizontal like that. So I explain that what we have. We have as is the source of ion. I means proton or alpha particle or neutron. So that ion source, which we earlier explained, radio frequency ion source also, we put in the center, and we take two metallic hollow D, D shape English letter like D, one D and the reverse D like that, and these are hollow, having some hollow means having some thickness. So hollow cylindrical, hollow uh, circular disc, hollow. Same is circular. Metallic electrodes electrodes in the shape of English letter.
D. So this is point D and this is reverse D and they are hollow having some thickness inside. Inside and these are in high vacuum. So this is the tube for the vacuum pump to evacuate this. From here air comes out and we evacuate on the system. Place D placed in the high vacuum. So high vacuum there and at the center S and source. This is another diagram and RF, yes, RF connected to the two by the Y connection here. So this electrode. So this is suppose uh, plus and this is suppose the minus. It will say not on it. RF frequency like this. So RF oscillator few kilovolt, maybe around 100 kilovolt. Frequency we will see what the frequency RF. It is a radio frequency, so we will see. And now the magnetic force, magnetic lines of forces, magnetic field like this. This is the north pole, this is the south pole. Electromagnet, a strong two electromagnet, elects two poles, north south pole. It is the passing the current and we have electromagnet. So a strong field is produced. So V is the field here produced. The lines of force are like vertical, north pole south. And this portion, it is parallel. The, the magnet is a special type that these end side, they are cut. A strong constant magnetic field V. In the, in the center portion lines of forces parallel and straight The outside portion of magnetic field the end portion of magnetic field Shimming of 
streaming of old faces through the lines of words are cut. Parallel each to each other, but they are cut both times. Also, this is called weakening of. Men defeat. Why this is done, I will explain you later. But the cold phases of this machine, the cyclotron, is at outer side. It is this is called shimming at certain angle, so the lines of forces becomes cut and not straight, not parallel. Beam. They are parallel, but they are cut, bulging out. So now, what happens? You have say. The electrostatic field is applied such that suppose we consider this portion and this portion we do not consider because maybe they are repelling. So that when this is this end is positive and this is negative, when ion is here positive ion, this ion gets electrostatic force from the RF oscillator and this gets accelerator, this gets energy, this velocity increases. Starting from this source, it's coming out with certain velocity, low velocity. And as it enters the inside the hollow D, the magnetic field, which is parallel lines of force, X, B. And the magnetic field keeps the R in the circular path, that is the same circular path. This distance is very close. The D's are very close. Means this, this and this. I have shown far because diagram we have to show like that. But they are very close. So that this is semi-circular path and here the ion comes out with a constant velocity and if it gets again here, this was negative and this was positive. So if this becomes negative, and this becomes positive, this ion again receives a force here and its velocity of energy increase. So that now it will move with the more velocity, so maybe radius more. And now it comes here, it moves here with the constant velocity, enters here and again the field becomes very attractive, means this is negative, this is positive, this changes. Then this gets accelerated and receives the energy, that is the force, and then velocity increases, it comes in the higher orbit, radius increases. It comes out and moves here in the field region and gets again an electrostatic force so that this becomes negative, this becomes positive, and then this gets accelerated, and so on. At each entry in the D, it is entering in the proper phase when the electrostatic force is accelerating. Then the ion will receive acceleration or velocity increases, energy increases. So we know that magnetic force when the magnetic field is B and magnetic force is B, Q and V where Q is the charge of ion for proton this is plus one and V is the velocity this magnetic force provides centripetal force or centripetal acceleration means to keep the this is to keep the particle in the circular path and this gives the centripetal force. Equal to magnetic force. So what we have? If M is the mass of the ion, V was the velocity, 
एम बी स्क्वायर ओवर आर सो दिस एम बी स्क्वायर ओवर आर यू कैन गेट एंड वॉट द एम बी स्क्वायर ओवर आर दिस इज सेंटीमीटर फोर्स सेंटीमीटर एक्सलेशन सो एम बी स्क्वायर वी राइट से स्मॉल आर यू विल राइट लेटर कैपिटल आर एम बी स्क्वायर ओवर आर इज इक्वल टू फ्रॉम वेयर द सेंटीमीटर फोर्स कमिंग by the magnetic force the reactionary force so b q v and the square over r is v q v this is the equation of this force two forces magnetic force and centripetal force produced by circular motion magnetic force so m v b cancels here and r goes there so m b the momentum of the particle is equal to v q and r m is the mass mass of the atom r is the radius of part so this remember as the velocity increases r should increase so to, to keep particle in the orbit fixed orbit r when b increases accordingly we have to see the r will increase so m b is equal to b to r or r can be calculated r is m b over b q now i told you that and this is the resonance accelerator but cyclic not not the linear so what is the resonance condition the resonance condition the resonance between what resonance between it should be between two things what two things you see this particle moving in the, the here with certain velocity in this orbit constant velocity in this orbit increase radius increase so velocity increase but constant velocity and here it moves in the field region again gets acceleration and velocity increases the radius increases so the time taken by particle to move the semi circular path This is negligible. Separation is negligible. So time taken by the particle semi circular path should be such that when the particles enter this gap, there is a proper electric field for acceleration. Means always this portion comes. This portion. This is not. If this is there, particle will get repulsion. So deceleration. So always means. the time taken in the semi circular path of this is almost negligible must be equal to the half of the time period of the radio frequency oscillator time taken by ion in semi circular path Must be equal to half of the time period of RF oscillator. I think you understand. This is the resonance condition. Resonance between two times, the time the half of the time period of oscillator. So that always this field is positive. as that the positive ion gets accelerated means when ion comes to coming here this should be negative this should be positive so it gets force acceleration when ion ion enters here it should be changed means it should be negative and it should be positive so it gets acceleration means in the time taken for half of the circular motion must be equal to the half of the time period of the oscillator that is the resonance condition That is T by two is the or it is one over two F is the RF time is equal to 
time taken by particle in the semicircular path. So what is that? Time taken by that. How much? Must be equal to t. What t? That is pi r over b. 2 pi r is the perimeter of circle. So half the circle means pi r over b is the velocity. So this time. It means this is the resonance condition that t by 1 over 2f must be equal to pi r over v. 1 over 2f must be equal to pi r over v. Or what we can write? We have r is equal to earlier. So what we get? We have earlier r r is equal to mv over dq, r is equal to mv over bq. So we can write r here this r. So 1 over 2f is equal to r mv over bq, mv so b cancel. So m pi, m pi over b cancel, bq. This is 1 over 2f or f the rf oscillator this is equal to f is equal to bq over 2m bq over 2 pi m bq over 2 pi m f. So rf frequency f and this is the bq over 2 by m. This is called f naught as the cyclotron frequency. So resonance condition is that f is equal to f naught because these are the parameters of machine. The magnetic field, charge of iron and mass of the so this is called cyclotron frequency and this is the RF oscillator frequency. So these two frequencies must be equal. That's the resonance condition. If this condition is fulfilled, the iron will always enter at the proper time to get acceleration. So remember that this is the important factor that we have to calculate the frequency of the RF oscillator. We have to design so that the, C, the frequency is equal to bq over 2 pi m. I think I can now run this diagram also. So now now what we get? See what is the support? Final velocity or maximum velocity, final maximum velocity of the ion is say Vm and RF potential is V capital Vm voltage how much? So what is the uh, again the condition of BQ uh, Vm BQ Vm again same earlier equation is m v m square over and then radius final radius r is equal to say capital R. So final velocity Vm m v square m over r. This means that Vm final velocity maximum velocity of the ion Vm is equal to
Bm this cancel so Bm B Q R over M Bm is equal to B Q R over M. Now what is the kind of energy gain? Energy energy of ion final E is equal to 1 by 2 m v m square kinetic energy velocity is vm maximum so this is the kinetic energy and we put the vm here from here we put here so e is equal to 1 by 2 m vm square means this is square so v square q square r square over m square so E the energy, kinetic energy gained, E is, yeah, M, this guy is nothing else. So V square, Q square, R square over 2M. Okay, so R E is equal to uh, V square, Q square. Well, VQ here, we have VQ, VQ is equal to, uh, what we can write, M, so can we substitute VQ, VQ is equal to RVM, VQ is equal to M, VQ is equal to M, VM over R, VQ is equal to M, VM over R. So we substitute here. We give the value of in terms of magnetic field. E is equal to V square Q square means this M square V M square. M square V M square over R square and here 2M and here R square. So this R square R square cancel and this one m also what we get no what we get e is equal to no we want to write uh, somehow in terms of where the frequency equation well frequency was f is equal to b q over 2 pi m so actually i want to you use here the frequency because frequency is the important parameter of the machine. So in place of this this formula we use in terms of f v q is equal to 2 pi m into f. Let us use this v q. So frequency comes in there. So e is equal to v q square means 2 pi m f 2 pi m f square r square over 2m. So E is equal to energy. 2, this is 2 square, 4, so 2 cancel, so 2 there, and 2 pi square. m square, this is m, so m. And f, and r square. 2 pi square mf r square 2 pi square m f square m square 2 pi square m f square r square is the energy energy of the ion in terms of frequency of the oximeter and radius of the cyclotron r is the radius of cyclotron maximum r is radius of cyclotron maximum radius. M is the mass, F is the frequency. So energy value in terms of mass of the ion, frequency of the operator and radius of the cyclotron. These two parameters are important. You have to design a machine having proper R, the radius, maximum radius of the D. And then you have to design oscillator accordingly of suitable frequency. So energy is equal to given by 
this formula that e is equal to 2 by square uh, square r square or uh, yeah here just we can calculate for say a proton mass if we put mass proton here and uh, uh, we put uh, some value of e is equal to this or this also we can write in some other form earlier we were, we were having this this formula also important e is equal to b square 2 square r of power 2 m so this formula is also important and this in terms of frequency this in terms of frequency this in terms of magnetic field and radius this in terms of frequency and radius so these are two expressions of energy well here we can put the mass of the ion charge of the ion and we can find out the relation for proton Tp proton is given by just you put the mass of proton mass of the proton in terms of over oh here mass of the proton and find out P in terms of uh, B and R Q of the proton one positive electron charge 1.6 Newton to power minus 90 coulomb. So this whole IEP will be equal to 47.9 B square R square. In terms of B square R square, you put Q here and mass of proton. Similarly for uh, this already in MEB. B in Tesla magnetic field r the meter radian and the e of neutron is also equal to 23.9 b square r square and e for alpha particle is also 23.9 b square r square now you can see that to get the frequency, you can get the frequency uh, from this formula or you can get what should be the frequency or we design a suitable uh, oscillator of certain frequency. So what we, should we have? We can get the frequency if R is fixed, if mass is fixed. So earlier we have say for B is equal to for B is equal to 1.6 Tesla. We can calculate B is equal to 1.6 Tesla. And uh, R you design R you design you fix the R value. R values suppose we have uh, some machine. The earlier machine which was designed, first machine, which was uh, around uh, E is equal to, R is equal to, uh, I don't remember, yeah, first machine was R is equal to 37 inches. Then next was R is equal to, uh, next machine was designed, R was equal to uh, 60, no, R, it is a diameter, diameter. 60 inches diameter. So we can calculate for this D and we can put R here and we can get for 1.6 Tesla we can get E and we can get from this some or idea of frequency. If R is here say uh, 37 inch and uh, say mass of the proton here or mass of the neutron or mass of the alpha then find out the frequency F we got from the calculations we get that frequency for proton is about 15.2 into 10 to the power 6 hertz means megacycles so it is really RF it is frequency if you put the for proton the mass of proton here 
and RSA this 27 inch bus machine and find out the F that FP is like 15.2 megahertz mega and uh, you can find out the frequency for neutron and frequency for alpha will be same because the charge mass of alpha is four times a proton and charge is two times so that means we put here and find out the e for this e for this was uh, 7.6 into 10 to the power 6 hertz for this magnetic field and this radius r into 27 by the by 2 so you can find out the frequency the frequencies of oscillators are really of RF or the mega cycle. Well, you can get the relation or suppose another type of relation that is n are the rotation of the n times the particle get acceleration and each time the, the voltage is V and Q is the charge. So if ion receives n time n time force or acceleration or there are n rotation you can say then what you get the n q and vm vm is the maximum rf potential it can be few kilovolt and and the number of turns of the iron machine. So how many times it gets the force and Q is the charge and we have the maximum potential of RF. So this is the energy received by iron after n rotation and QBM and this will be 1 by 2 m Vm square where Vm is the maximum velocity. Maximum velocity acquired by the arm. So this n to v m is half n v m squared. Now what do you get from here? What do you get? Twice n q v m divide by m and 1 by 2 this is the value of vm maximum velocity is equal to this value and you know this value of from the earlier relation of v to r this relation vm from the momentum equation mv what we have v q r the maximum radius V to R over M and V. V to this is the relation only we got from the centripetal force and magnetic force. V M is equal to V to R over M. So this relation you can find out from this the value of R. The R if you calculate from this R I will get here. R is equal to uh, 2 N M and V M and V uh, square Q V square Q square this is because V M so R is here M it comes inside M square you want to know so this M cancels so this is so 2 N M V M this over M this comes under the so this is square this comes here this is sorry this comes here M is square and uh, over V square Q square and this whole is within one by two. So R is equal to what do we get? We cancel this M here. 
and what we get? We get, uh, oh, this is m square here, this is m cancel. So what we get? This was, no, this was m here, and this m came inside, this m is from where? This m is not here. 2n, 2n cube, 2n cube. What we get? Sorry. So this relation we have, here it comes twice, twice and Q, M comes inside, M square and V M divided by M, this is uh, under root 1 by 2 and V Q, V Q also comes inside, so V square Q square. This is equal to R. So what is R? This M cancels here. So R is equal to 2 and this Q also. 2 and M V M divided by V square and uh, Q. 1 by 2. 2n m b m b square q ah uh, yeah q square 2 or b square 2 m by 2 so r is the you can get q is constant m is the constant mass of line b m is the maximum velocity of maximum voltage of r constant b magnitude field q chart so what we get r is proportional to n to power 1 by 2. The radius of increasing radius of the cyclotron is proportional to n to power 1 by 2. This means if n becomes higher for higher values of n the circle circular path comes closer because in natural numbers you take the root of 1, 2, 3, 4 high number, n is high so as n increasing they comes close, 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 another root so this means we start say in the beginning the r is far away and as the r increases the radius becomes closer, closer, like this, closer, closer, closer. So, we got radius proportional to n to power 1 by 2. So, higher the orbit, the radius comes closer. Okay, so now what else we want to discuss here, the cycle of the machine, what else we can discuss here, that our that we have seen. Uh, R is proportional to n by 2. Now I explain you uh, energy we have calculated, everything we have calculated. Why the pole faces are uh, made, say, why the pole faces on shimming of the field? That is the uh, this is a pole with the poles here and these are the parallel. So here, up to here, lines of forces are parallel. Straight. Here are lines of forces are like this. So I consider one nano force here. This is the center axis. This upper side, this lower side. Here the tangent on the lines of force is like this. Here the tangent is like this. So this the B is the magnetic field. So B the magnetic field here has got two components. One is component perpendicular like this. This B like this. There's a tangent here. So sorry. One may be 
this is the tangent here. So one moving component on this side, one moving component on this side. Similarly, this component may be on this side, this and this component on this side. So these lines of forces they are providing magnetic field. Tangent is now curved. So one is one is vertical. We can say this is the V Z component. This is a V Z component. This is a V R component. V R component. So what is there? Or we can say that lines of force here provide the. This is the lines of force. Magnetic lines of force. This is the magnetic lines of force. Your so magnetic field provides a force. V to V, that is the third direction, perpendicular to the plane, means to the motion, velocity, and the magnetic. So the this provides a force like this. This provides a force like this. So this force, the magnetic force F. This force F. This force has got now two components. One is this horizontal F. R and one is vertical F J Z. This force has got two components. One is say, like this. This is a F R. This is a F J. So lines of forces are curved such that this is the magnetic field. Magnetic field force will be perpendicular to this. So it may not be clear from here. We got a third direction dimension. Here, this is the lines of force. The force is perpendicular to lines of force. So remember, in the upper half, this force is F J downward. In the lower half, F J is upward. And F R is always toward the side. So shearing of Pole faces provides the curved lines of force, and we get.
Similarly, in the lower half, here, in the lower half, lower half of the electrodes, the force FJ is acquired. A beam coming down the force sends back upward. So a beam is deflected from its meridian plane up or down the vertical forces Fz they sends the beam towards the meridian plane, axis plane, cyclotron plane, basically. So any deflection of beam is controlled by these two forces, Fz up and then Fz down. And Fr is like this. So if the beam goes outside the R, then you remember, this is parallel at R. This is the radius R equal to R. So if the beam goes out, if the value of R increases, what happens if the value of R increases? The force FR, the force FR always the beam towards R fixed radius. If the beam goes out, the force which is FR here and here also FR to inside. This force sends to inside. So remember that this bulging of the lines of forces or shimming of the magnetic field, shimming of, of pole faces this is called fringing of magnetic field Fringing of magnetic field by shimming of pole faces is intentionally done to keep ion in the orbit R and to keep the beam in the meridian plane meridian plane of cyclotron so beam remains always in the central portion of the cyclotron and always radius r is not Infinity because as it is transmitting, the force acts immediately. Actually, these forces are the magnetic field is set such that from the suppose here the field is V is equal to V naught up to here constant, and outside the field decreases. So we decrease intensity field by equation that V is equal to V naught and then R over R to power F. So as R changes, R is the capital of the constant cyclotron radius, there is the any R and N is called field index. You can say like so field is now weakened like that. As R increases, field decreases by this equation. 
And you can say mathematically, you can show that n is less than 1. If you make the field v, n is less than 1. And uh, in fact, this field or shimming of the point is creating this f r and f z, these forces f z and f r creates simple harmonic motion of the beam. As the beam goes up, this force moves down. Beam comes down from the axis. Beam comes down, this force and back. Then beam goes slightly up and then beam comes down. So like in two, three oscillations, beam comes in the parallel plane. So these forces and here also the beam radius increases the force and this side. Beam comes this side and then the magnetic field sends again this side. So oscillations start. So these forces F, Z and F, R create simple harmonic motion or oscillation. And you can, you see these oscillations are given some name. Because these were first studied in a machine called beta tron, the oscillations are called beta tron oscillation. You can solve mathematical equations of forces and you can get the frequencies of the oscillation, beta to oscillation. And I don't want to do the mathematics, mathematics, but I have the solutions of the differential equation. The frequency of Fz, Z motion, is given by uh, F0 under root N. And Fr, frequency of radial oscillation, is given by F0. 1 minus n to power 1 by 2. These are the frequencies of the beta tron oscillations, mean vertical oscillations and horizontal oscillations, provided by these forces, simple harmonic motion. So this n, you can, from this you can find out n should be less than 1. If n is more than 1, this will be not possible, this will be negative, and imaginary. So these beta tron oscillations are intentionally provided why? To have been in the fixed orbit, this is called radial focusing. Beam is radially focused, means beam is moving in one meridian plane, fixed orbit R. If R increases, the force sends back. So there are oscillations around the fixed orbit R and then oscillation die down. And similarly, beam goes down, the force sends up, it comes up, again the vertical force down, and then vertical force down sends up. So like that there are vertical oscillations. And then beam comes in the fixed meridian plane. Our aim is to get a strong beam, number of particles per unit area large. So focus beam in one meridian plane so that this beam hits the target in large number of particles. So to have the, a strong beam, we should have well-focused beam. So these beta tron oscillations are intentionally provided to keep the beam in same meridian plane, in the fixed orbit and the horizontal central axis of the hydrotron. But the theory of these was studied first in the machine which is beta tron oscillator beta tron beta tron machine was for electron acceleration so beta tron is a accelerator for electron and the oscillation was studied in beta tron so the name is given beta tron oscillation but these oscillations are introduced intentionally by making shimming of the pole phases or fringing of magnetic field so that we get in the fixed orbit, in the fixed meridian, 
plane our beam. So this is known as the radial focusing. The beam is radially focused. Now the question is again just we were having the linear accelerator here that in which portion of the RF we should allow the beam to enter. So we have or we can make diagram so that we this side. And this is a this is not allowed, negative portion, only this portion. So BM is the matrix, the electrostatic force, electrostatic potential. We can have BM here also, here also. BM value is available here also, here also. So whether we should allow our ion to enter the gap for acceleration in this quadrant, or in this quarter, which is which is allowed. So this I, I will discuss here first, and let us see that uh, this is called phase focusing. Earlier we have radial focusing or meridian plane focusing. The beam is in one plane, intense beam, striking the target because at the end of the machine radius R, a deflecting potential is applied to deflect the beam from its circular path and it goes in a tunnel to strike the target. Back home, the whole tunnel is there back home. So beam is deflected by a deflecting potential to strike the target, to study the nuclear reaction. So this portion like uh, this here also. This portion is not used, this portion and next this portion and then. So this is RF. This is the highest goal value we apply in this potential we have. So if we allow the particle to enter here, point 0.1 at time t equal to 1, or we allow the particle to enter some particles at this time, point 0.2 time t2 and some particles coming here 3 t3 we consider we consider the second quadrant of oscillator where potential Vm is used to accelerate in the second quadrant potential is is decreasing from maximum to zero. We have two. This is increasing from zero to maximum. This is the second half decreasing from maximum to zero. So we are considering this portion. Suppose large number of particles are entering at the time one, this time T1 where potential is Vm. Most of the particles. Entering where potential V1 is equal to Vm time T1. It gets the potential V1, Vm, and it gets the energy and velocity. Now it goes in the circular path and again comes when it gets the potential there. So this particle always coming here, one. 
Allah and Allah party. Now consider both parties who are coming at two. Means when time to two, when potential is less than we have. Some parties. Entering the gap for acceleration at T2, where V2 is less than Vm. These particles will receive what? Less energy, less force, less velocity. So these particles will move slow. These particles get lesser velocity than at say one is up to. So lesser velocity means this will take more time. More time is time increasing, less velocity, more time. So more time is the next gap from this side, time increasing. Or you can say reverse. You think you have to think that these particles are getting less velocity, and you have relation between velocity and the r. What is that? You see, what is the radi relation? Velocity radius. You have a relation between. Earlier I told you that r is equal to. Uh, what was the relation? R is equal to. Oh, uh, pi r. Half, half. That is a. Uh, yes. What is the r is equal to m v over v q. R is equal to m v over v q. So those particles at coming at t two, they get less velocity v. So less velocity means radius decreases. They move in the sort of semi-circular path of less radius. Less radius means these will take. These particles get lesser velocity. V is less. These will move in R less than R one. So less than R one means less radius. So means it will take a small time. Means T two, T two will be less than or T two less here. These particles, the next one, T two less. T two less will be less than T. Means so this was here and this is less. Means this was a T two and this T two prime is less here. So these particles are going towards one. The particles reaching at two in the next gap, they are moving in the same circular path of less radius. So they take less time, and hence they come closer to one. In the next gap, they will further come closer to one. So these particles, which are away to the more last and more large number of particles, these particles get focused towards the one. Ultimately, this goes to the closer. Similarly, what will happen? These particles, particles entering at T3, what will happen? Particle entering at T3 particles or ion entering the gap.
at t3, t3 is less than t1. Now what will happen? They receive less voltage. Oh, higher voltage, because one is Vm is more this side. They, these will receive voltage V3 more than Vm or V1 frequency. So this is more. More means more velocity. More velocity means R will increase. Velocity V3 more than V1. Time, so these will move by here, R. In the orbit, R, R3 more than R1. So what will happen? Oh, V is less, V3 V3 is more, so V3 more means this is R is more. R is more means more time. This will take more time. More time means they were coming here at this time. In this gap they are taking more time means time increasing. So from here this is what we see now they are coming, taking more time means they are coming to this side. T3 prime. So this was one. T2, T2 is here and T3 is here. So T3 is going to T3 prime and T2 going to T2 prime. Means in successive accelerations these particles and these particles are going towards the larger number of particles it means these particles, these particles are coming in the same phase, coming at the same time. So the phase of the, all the particles comes the same. So this is phase focusing. Phase focusing is done by allowing the particle to enter the accelerating gap when field is decreasing from maximum to this side. You can think yourself that if we allow the particles to enter on this side, when field potential is increasing from zero to maximum, the opposite will happen. Means this particle will reach some time. These particles move here. These particles move here. So these particles will go away. So away means out of focus. So in this quadrant, phase focusing is not achieved and we don't use this quadrant. Just like in the linear accelerator, we will use this quadrant. Here in the RF oscillator, we use this much portion, second quadrant of the RF oscillator. When field is maximum decreasing towards zero, all the particles which are away away, they come together in a successive acceleration, in the successive entry of the acceleration gap, and they come closer, closer, closer. So this means phase focusing. The phase focusing is achieved in the cyclotron by using the RF oscillator second quadrant and radial focusing is achieved by introducing beta turn oscillation where particles by the simming of the pole phase is done and particles get vertical and horizontal oscillations and they come in the fixed orbit in the fixed meridian axis. So this allows the phase focusing and radial focusing beam because we should get a beam in the same phase so that all the particles is trying the target at the same time, the same phase and we should get intense beam means all the particles is moving in the same plane. Now what the condition for the cyclotron? What, how much energy? Condition, how much energy we can get? Up to what energy or the cyclotron? Cyclotron limitations. What are the limitations? We have we have the equation you remember 
the frequency equation, what was the frequency equation? Frequency equation was cyclotron frequency RF frequency F is equal to F naught is equal to B cube over 2 pi N. So this resonance condition is fulfilled. Resonance condition is fulfilled till M is constant. If M starts varying, means particle becomes relativistic. What that M is equal to? Mass M is equal to fixed less mass M naught over 1 minus beta square 1 by 2, where beta is V over C, the ratio of the particle velocity to light velocity. So this M is still M is constant, but M starts varying if M starts varying the resonance condition is not satisfied. This thing should be equal to F. RF oxidation must be this one. So we calculate RF by putting mass, by putting magnetic field, charge, etc. And RF frequency is fixed. So this is fixed frequency. Fixed frequency is cyclotron. Cyclotron, the radio frequency of oxygen is fixed. This condition, resonance condition. But if velocity increases such that M starts varying, the condition will not be fulfilled. So what we will get? F naught will vary or F frequency will vary. How? B Q over twice by M naught rest mass. And 1 minus beta square 1 by 2. So this starts varying and this is not constant. F must be equal to F naught, but F naught is not constant because this B increasing, B over C increasing and hence this factor. So cyclotron cannot be used when the particle becomes a relativistic. So fixed frequency Fixed frequency cyclotron is for non relativistic particles or ions to have the higher energy machines. What we do, we use frequency modulated cyclotron. This machine is also called synchro. Cyclotron. Synchrotron, frequency modulated cyclotron, synchrotron means a machine which is modified where the oscillator is not of the fixed frequency f, but the variable frequency so that this equation is satisfied, this becomes constant means we have the frequency f, what frequency? f naught, f is equal to f naught. 
1 minus beta square 1 by 2. We change the frequency, sorry, f. We change the frequency of cyclotron uh, oscillator with this equation, f not 1 minus beta square. 1 minus beta square means 1 minus b square over c square. So as the b increases, this decreases. So what we should do? We should design an oscillator having a variable frequency with this equation, f should vary like this. As b changes, we put the here b value and we calculate what should be the f. f not is fixed, f not is fixed, this thing is with a constant mass. f not by the cyclotron frequency, then the b q over 2 by m, this. Fixed, m by fixed. So, we change the cyclotron frequency, oscillator frequency by this equation. So, what do we do? We use the frequency modulator cyclotron. So, in the oscillator circuit, in the oscillator tank circuit, We take frequency modulator oscillator means tank circuit capacitor is moved by a motor. You know capacitor, capacity is Ka 4 pi d. K is the dielectric constant, A is the area of plates, D is the distance. So the capacity, we change the capacity by changing the, what? D is fixed, so by changing the A. Means area of the plates, we have the capacitor plates, oscillator in the circuit of, say, Tank circuit of oscillator with C and this L. Oscillator circuit, this is the RF oscillator. And this C is not fixed. C is variable. By electric motor, we rotate the plates of C. As you have in the earlier radio, that's why you were having a tuning circuit in which we were rotating the capacitor, air capacitor and we were getting different frequencies, resonances and different frequencies matching. So they were going sometimes all India radio, sometimes we were working by changing the capacitor C. So this C is the parallel plate capacitor. Its plates are maximum using and then came out. So area of the plates is decreasing. So by this moving capacitor by electric motor, we are changing the C means capacity. So we are changing the capacitor means the frequency is F is equal to 1 over 2 pi under root L C. L is the inductance, C is the capacitor. So by moving the C, we are changing F. By increasing C, we are increasing F. By decreasing C, no, by, sorry, by decreasing C, we are increasing F. By increasing C, we are decreasing F. So what we do? We decrease F by this equation. As B increases, we change the frequency F that by changing C so that the resonance condition is fulfilled. This condition is fulfilled. So we have a frequency modulated cyclotron, a cyclotron in which the oscillator circuit we have, tank circuit, variable frequency condenser. It means that we have a, like this, like this. So this was the frequency, the earlier frequency F0, or this is the F1, and this is the F2. When particle is, so from the cyclotron, what we do? Cyclotron 
एक्सीलरेटर पार्टिकल वे अलाउ द पार्टिकल एक्सीलरेटर फ्रॉम साइक्लोट्रॉन और हाई एनर्जी वाट एवर टू एंटर इन द फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडुलेट साइक्लो ऑन सिंक्रोट्रॉन एट दिस फ्रीक्वेंसी वेन द इट इज पार्टिकल इज जस्ट स्टार्टिंग नॉन इलेक्ट्रिस्ट इट बिकम्स इलेक्ट्रिस्ट एंड दिस इज द इंजेक्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड दिस इज द इजेक्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी इंजेक्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी मीन्स वेन द पार्टिकल इंजेक्टेड इन द मशीन सो वी कैन हैव टू मशीन इन कैसकेट द साइक्लोट्रॉन विच हैज एक्सेलेटेड ए पार्टिकल अप टू एनर्जी इट बिकम्स रिलेटिविस्टिक एज सुन एज इट बिकम्स रिलेटिविस्टिक एट दैट कॉन्स्टेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी वी अलाउ द पार्टिकल टू एंटर एज अ मशीन विच इज फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉड्यूटेड साइक्लोट्रॉन और सिंक्रोट्रॉन सो दैट और यू कैन सिंक्रो साइक्लोट्रॉन सो दैट पार्टिकल एंटर सीयर एंड इट रिवॉल्व इन द Frequency modulated cyclotron, it gets energy, and at each acceleration, its a mass increases. So this frequency change means decreases. You have to decrease the frequency of the by adjusting the capacitor so that eject frequency is less, inject frequency is high, eject frequency is less, and we can calculate the frequency from the mass or the energy of the particle. At this energy, what the mass? At this energy, what the mass? So inject and eject frequency. There are two frequencies, and we use frequency modulated cyclotron to accelerate the ion to very high energy. There is no limit. Limit is till the particle starts radiating energy. So radiating Bram Stoker energy loss of the particle is equal to the energy gain, and we cannot. Increase the energy beyond that. So this frequency modulated cyclotron is a machine to accelerate the same. Earlier cyclotron was having say energy limit for alpha particle is 80 mV. After that alpha particle becomes relative state. For neutron it was about 40 mV. For proton it was about 20 mV. So after 20 mV it was not possible to accelerate proton by cyclotron. So then we inject 20 mV proton into another machine that is frequency modulator that adjusts the mass variation by densification by changing the capacitor so that we adjust the frequency. I guess. So cyclotron and synchro cyclotron they are you see having no limit or rather the limit is only by the Energy radiated from the ion is equal to energy gain, so that energy is not increasing beyond that. Whatever energy is gained, that is radiated as a radiation law. We have that limit. Otherwise, these machines, frequency modulated cyclotron, synchrotrons are very high energy machines, and they can accelerate the protons, alpha particles, heavy ions, any machine, any particle. to very high energy so friends i will stop today here and maybe tomorrow or next time when we meet i will discuss on some other important topic thank you very much for listening me